Good afternoon, everyone. This is your uh, sixth lab sheet for the image processing laboratory. This will be on Bayesian classifiers. This, uh, this would help you to get some uh, basic fair um, hands-on experience with the basic plottings and basic understanding of Bayesian classifiers. Um, so this also we kept it at a very basic level such that you can finish it off in one week. Don't get uh, worried about by looking at the size of this. So the first assignment, so the uh, so here is the first question. This is about ge uh, generate and plot a data set of 1200 data points, 2D vectors that stem from three equiprobable classes modeled by normal distributions with mean vectors of 1, 1, 7, 7, 15, 1 and covariance matrices given here. Okay. These are the ones given. Now, you need to generate and plot a data set of 1200 points. And it is given that these are, uh, and each point is what dimensional? Each feature vector is of? Two classes. No, no, classes are three here. Feature vector size. Sorry, is sorry, L, L is equal to two. Right, L equal to two and M equal to three. Okay. And what you need to do is look at here. These are equiprobable classes. What does that mean? Out of 1200, then how many samples you should generate from class one? How many samples should you generate out of this 1200 for class one? 400. 400 because it is equiprobable you have three classes here right so you generate 400 samples same is case for class 2 and class 3 right you know that these are gaussian distributed classes and uh, yeah, these are gaussian distributed classes that is given so you could use this command also uh, in matlab which is multivariate normal random numbers for multivariate normal random distribution. So this command takes what should be the uh, your uh, size of your vector, uh, which dimensional Gaussian random sampling you want to do. And that's how you could generate them. And after you generate, you simply plot them. Uh, it's like a scatter. It's, it's a two dimensional plot you have been asked for. So how would that be? For example, two-dimensional plot means it could be something like you have x1 here, x2 here, okay? It's use one color or one type of marking for this, maybe cross here. Then you use another different color here, okay, just like this you plot it for another class and then another color and uh, maybe if, uh, if you have used cross there you use plus here and uh, you you draw them. this is how you could uh, plot right you have seen some plots already of that nature that's all you have to do so if they are given 1200 samples it's three classes and um, two dimensional feature vector and you know the mean and variance of each class. Anything else required or is that enough? Is it clear and what needs to be done in this first, first part of the first question? Are any, any queries? Is it fine? Uh, yes, sir. it's fine. Okay, good. So when you come to the say very simple thing, you just need to give appropriate parameters and I don't know, maybe scatter or whatever is required. Just look at that and plot it that way. Fine. Then repeat A when the a priori probabilities of the classes are given by the vector 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.1. Show 
the samples of each class in different different color for better visualization just but how, how is it different now what what needs to be changed now when you come from part a to part b the number of hmm, number of yeah earlier it was equiprobable so we we mm -hmm. we have uh, generated 400 uh, uh, of each classes mm -hmm. now we, we have to generate a different number like uh, uh, first class we have to generate around uh, 800, yeah. I guess. Right, 60% of your samples should be yeah. for the class one, 30 percent should be for class two, 10 percent should be for class three. And then again, draw something similar to this. That's all. Okay. This is hardly two, three lines of code for each part should be good enough to plot it if you write properly. Okay. So now can I move on to the second question now? Right. So now generate and plot. A data set of n equal to 1000 two dimensional vectors that stem from three equiprobable classes modeled by normal distributions with mean vectors of 11, 14, 7, 16, 1, and covariance matrices of 5, 3, 3, 4. Classify the test samples x1 equal to 52 x2 equal to 175 x3 equal to 92 based on bayesian classification mahalanobis distance classification um, euclidean distance classification so and write the inferences just one quick question um, yeah, will euclidean classification will uh, will give you the same results as bayesian and mahalanobis in this special in this special case uh, yes sir it will give sir. i would say no sir the covariance matrices uh, value is same on the non diagonal okay. elements is that good enough Is that good enough uh, or something else is required such that your Euclidean distance based classification is same as Bayesian classification? Can someone try answering this question? You have recently written the exam, so you should be able to answer this. When does Euclidean distance give you? It is not just that the covariance matrices are same, but there is some other condition is also there. What is that? You can refer to your notes and tell. The variances are equal, sir. Yes, variances of what? Variances of? The two feature vectors are in oh, no, 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 no. See, there is a covariance matrix, there is a specific property required for the covariance matrix. So, sorry, of the two classes, are that is not good enough. See, tell me in terms of that covariance matrix you see as 5334, right? Now, you comment on that based on that. of time after lunch and that to finishing the exams just very recently. You can refer to your notes and even tell, you can quickly refer to that and see when Euclidean distance, when did the Euclidean distance come there? It should be a diagonal matrix isn't it that is only when you will get sigma square out do you remember the mahalanobis distance x minus mu x bar minus mu bar transpose into sigma inverse into x bar minus mu bar when the sigma is a diagonal 
sigma is a diagonal matrix and identity diagonal matrix with half diagonal elements zero and diagonal elements same then only that turns out to be euclidean distance are you able to recollect or this is too much to ask for hmm? are you able to recollect that and agree with that yes sir right so still you could compute uh, for example if i ask you now uh, euclidean distance to compute what you could here simply do is simply compute that x bar minus mu bar the norm of it you could consider without considering the sigma term so when i ask you for mahalanobis distance you could do here x bar minus mu bar transpose sigma inverse into x bar minus mu bar you can do that as well and uh, bayesian classic but will mahalanobis distance would give you the correct class bayesian classification there will the result from bayesian classification and mahalanobis distance always guaranteed to be same here in this case or no are the results from bayesian classification and mahalanobis distance guaranteed to be same or no are yeah, you should keep quiet before the exam because that time you might not have studied but now we should be answering jumping under the question and answering at least try answering both are same sir right both are same here unless i had given you different covariance matrices for s1 s2 s3 hmm, please revise once again uh, just that you have written exam doesn't guarantee that you have grasped everything there so please do uh, refresh your um, refresh um, uh, your basics in this area so my guess here is bayesian how do you do bayesian classification so that means based on the probabilities you need to do how do you do that you know so mahalanobis distance essentially how do you do that a given x bar is given for each this you compute for you vary when mu bar equal to mu 1 mu 2 how many classes are there here three classes are there okay you take mu 1 mu 2 mu 3 and uh, then you compute the mahalanobis distance for all of them and pick that which has assign that x bar to that class which has minimum mahalanobis distance or maximum mahalanobis distance minimum minimum mahalanobis distance right and how about this how do you do bayesian classification now so you are given these points how do you assign it to one of the classes say for example x1 equal to 5 comma 2 is given x bar 1 let me call it as x1 bar 5 comma 2 is given so based on bayesian classification how do you assign to one of the classes omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 how do you do that any ideas about that what about the prayer probabilities here for three classes 1 by 3 1 by 3 so they are all same then uh, is maximum likelihood good enough for me to perform the classifications Yes, sir. Right. So, if I compute probability of x bar given omega one, right, and probabilities of x bar given omega two, and probability of x bar given omega three, if I calculate these three, right, how do I calculate this probability of x bar given omega one? Okay, can I calculate this from these values that were given there? Is it possible? Hi, so much of silence. Is it a tough question? 
I'm afraid not. How do you compute probability of X bar given omega 1? You can ask me questions in return if you want. Either answer, you have the right to either ask a question or answer my question. By writing the pro, uh, distribution function. Yeah, tell me what is that? 1 over 2 pi into square. Okay. What do I get here? 2 pi whole power. Now I doubt how you guys have performed in the exam now. <laughs> Look at the, what is the, is it a 1D distribution, 2D distribution, 3D distribution? What is this? 2D. 2D distribution. So write the 2D expression there. You know the mean values. You know the covariance matrices. So you could uh, use this Gaussian function. I am not writing it for you. Yeah, it is already there. Uh, in my earlier classes as well as textbooks. So you compute all these three and assign it to that particular class, this X bar, for a given X bar, assign it to that class which resulted in minimum of these three or maximum of these three to the class that resulted in minimum value or maximum value. Maximum value. Right, maximum likelihood. This problem is nothing but uh, whichever likelihood is maximum, you assign it to that particular class. Suppose if I have not given equiprobable classes, then you would have considered multiplying it with probability of omega 1 here, probability of omega 2 here, probability of omega 3 here. I hope uh, this concept is clear to you. If not, again, go through the previous classes and then come back to this again and see. Okay, this is again a very simple thing. Uh, half an hour should be good enough for you to uh, implement that. Okay, so yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, generate vectors, VP probable, covariance, and classify, and that's all. So uh, uh, can I move on to the third question now? So the first question is about... Uh, all equiprobable classes, then uh, repeat with varying prayer probabilities. All that you are doing is just plotting. Second one, you are doing classification, right? And of course, the correct classification is Bayesian and Mahalanobis. So anyways, I would like you to think about it and make some, write some comments also, comment on your results also, and write the inferences is there. Okay, this I would like to see anyway how even quite a few points already. So look at look into it. Okay, can you move on to the last question, third question? So there is an iris data. Iris, what is iris? Anyone know? Did anyone know what this iris data set is? What is iris? Ah, uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry, it's a part of an eye. Right, but here that's not that one. Here this is a flowers are also there if you have looked at. Um, so these are uh, different kinds of uh, flowers are there. These are also referred to as iris. Okay, this data set is about these kinds of different flowers. Like uh, this looks like iris setosa. And then um, this is Iris Virginica, it looks like. And uh, this is Iris Versicolor. <clears throat> okay. These are, I think, uh, three different uh, types of flowers are there. So you don't worry, need to process these images at this point. So what you are given uh, is that you have iris test data set that may, maybe i'll open test as well as trying data set uh, sir there is a, a readme file sir like right. what feature is uh, what ah, like that. okay 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 right so this tells you there are few uh, uh seventh one sir attribute information right right so sepal length sepal width 
petal length, petal width. These are the attributes that they have been measured in whatever way it has been measured, either most likely from images itself, they can be measured or automatically extracted and that you don't have to worry about. This has been done and you have three classes. So can you, uh, so now I, I think I, I have told it enough, so I don't think I need to spoon feed you with what is feature vector and what are the number of classes you should be already knowing it by this time, if not think about it. So let me come to the training data set. So this first column corresponds to first one feature, second column to second feature, third column to third feature, this D column to fourth feature. This tells you the ground truth, okay? So your training data, it seems like how 135, 135, samples are there in your training data. So what you need to do now, okay, is to learn the distributions from this data for each class. What are the classes here? That is asked as a part of your uh, programming assignment, but still I'm uh, still discussing the same. What are the classes here? The three types of flowers. Which are right. Those are the three classes. Your feature vector is, of course, for each of them, each of this sample, this corresponds to a feature vector. Your row values in A, B, C, D corresponds to the feature vector. Now, the training data set has been given to you in order to compute various things. That could be the mean, the variance, can we assume a Gaussian, uh, Vaishnavi, we can assume a Gaussian distribution here, correct? Uh, yeah. So you assume a Gaussian distribution here and compute the mean values, the variance values for each class and whatever else is required, the prayer probabilities. We have discussed in our course how to compute the prayer probabilities uh, probability of occurrence of each class you could compute from this training data to do that and use those values then you have a test data is there for you in the test data this is the ground truth so take these features and now estimate what is your ground truth there estimate the ground truth and compare with this Estimate not ground truth, estimate uh, the classification, automated classification from your Bayesian classifier. And then compare that with the ground truth given here for the testing data and then compute how, how accurately you are able to do this job. So that's the big picture. Now let's go back to the document here. So first, complete the following table, feature vector dimensions, number of classes, prayer probabilities of each class, mean vector and its dimensions, covariance matrix and its dimensions. So you compute all these things from the training data, testing data. Training data. Training data. Right, you do that. Then try different combinations of two-dimensional features from given features, which can classify the test samples based on Bayesian classification and write your observations. See, there is no rule that you have to use all four, correct? Those are the measurements that have been done. So here the question is, out of these four, you can take different combinations of pairs of feature vectors you can take. Correct. So how many can you take? How many combinations are possible? Hey, there are four there. You need to pick two. How many ways can you do? Six. six right. So you try all those six. That's what we mean here. Uh, is it not Vaishnavi? Sir? That is uh, what you we meant in this uh, question, right? Yes, sir. Uh, you're, they have to take... Uh any different combination and see 
So just to How two out of, so they need to try those six combinations and pick that yeah. which gives them best result, correct? Yes, sir, yes, sir. correct. Right, right. That's what you do it. Then that's the part B of your question. Then comment on whether Mahalanobis distance or Euclidean distance-based classification can be used for this data. So, of course, we discussed it now in a good length and um, when one th each of them can be used. And here you have these all these parameters available. So then based on that, you make comments there. Then plot the decision boundaries for different combination of features as shown in the figure below and comment about the decision boundaries between different classes. So, uh, Vaishnavi, are we asking them for all six combinations or just one best combination? Uh, sir, uh, they can plot uh, I mean, two or three and they can comment about uh, how the data is distributed and how it can be separated kind of. No, I mean, uh, they have now four uh, four dimensional feature vector is there, na? So, yes, sir, yes. we need to take uh, two dimensional feature vector. So, six possibilities are there. Correct. Correct. So, are we asking, let's say, for the best two, three? Ah, yes. Sir. Best. Uh, I mean, I was thinking if all the six is given, it may be difficult for them. So, they can, anyway, uh, if, if they want to plot all the six, they can. Uh, yeah, let me plot also. It's just calling that uh, function. So, yes, that's yes. fine. Hmm, you used to see, uh, we there is a reason why um, in this assignment, uh, we have just fixed it to two-dimensional feature vector. Correct, correct. Yes. Because you could visualize it. That's the visualize. reason. Not that it gives you two or enough. It's because you will get an intuition and feel for it. Okay. So you do one thing. You guys do one thing. Uh, it's just calling that same function. And anyway, it's not too big. Uh, it will not screw up your um, systems or laptops. So do it for all six combinations and just put all those three. And what I we would like to see is the uh, boundaries between different classes is what we would like to see. If something uh, belongs to a particular class, you put it into one color there. Okay, maybe I'll just make it big for you. Okay, so uh, something like this. Okay, you do, you would write for all uh, six combinations. Permita permutations are not required. Combinations are good enough. And then... You could use, I think uh, she's using some, she's plotting it and she's doing it using plot 3D. Okay. And okay. then you can keep it hold on there so that the old one will be there. And she is looking at whichever value is more. And that, if it is for class one, let's say she is giving red color, class two is given blue color, class three is more that is given a green color. So you have all samples generate, your samples are. Nothing but the ones which are there in your testing data, is it not? Yes, that, for, uh, that, that black dot which are, are, we are showing is uh, one from the test sample. The remaining is training, correct? Uh, that uh, we are taking the all the points in the grid and checking which belongs to which kind of. Okay, okay. So that means uh, you are taking samples from the distribution. Uh, exactly, correct, sir. Right. See, for plotting this, what you will do is you use the train data to get these values. Okay. This is a Gaussian distribution. Assume it is very fair here to assume this is a Gaussian distribution. So assume that. And then once you know the Gaussian distribution and feature vector lengths, you know, minimum and maximum. Within that, you compute each of those likelihood functions if they are equiprobable. If not, you consider multiplied with probability of omega one, and then whichever is maximum, you put that point in this grid, okay, for this x one and x two into that particular color. Suppose if if class one is more, put it in red. Class two is more, put it in blue. Class three is more, put it in green. Something like that, okay. And this would set the uh, kind of canvas for it. On top of it, now once you have this. Uh, testing points, which you do it now based on you do the um, classification, okay, based on Bayesian classification, okay, that means probabilities. If they are not equal probable, probability of omega i into likelihood function for 
class omega i for class i. Okay, that you do, and whichever is maximum you assign to that class, and those points you mark here. That's how this is again plotting is just a few lines of code. All you need to see, as I said, is see uh, whichever value for this grid is more out of these three probabilities, assign one specific color to each of them. And on top of it, you use something like hold on command and on top of it, just plot this given X bar and see to which class they belong to. Okay, any questions? Is that clear to everyone? Right, okay, maybe let me finish this E part also, last part also, and then I'll give you time for, uh, yeah, this is only for reference, okay? This is not the final one that you would be getting there, okay? Th there are more sophisticated ways of drawing it, but we want to uh, not let you invest in uh, figuring out the drawing commands. So this is something that um, uh, our TAs have figured out. Simply use plot 3D and then use that color based on which is more and you are done with it. Okay, that's a simple thing. So that those are the hints to draw such thing. And this is for a reference graph on uh, how you need to plot, not that you will get the same boundaries for each of them. Okay, so then compute the classification error for each class by calculating the ratio of misclassified samples to the total number of samples so you know for the test this you this classification this calculation you do for the test data where you have 15 data sets are there suppose it belongs to iris setosa it has been assumed that it has been given to iris it has been assigned in your whole process to iris versicolor okay assume that then what will you do this is a misclassified you count such mis misclassifications divided by total number of samples, which is here, for example, 15. You calculate it for all six. That's all you have to do. Okay, this actually the size of uh, this explanation required more than what it is as such uh, the complexity of this thing. Now, yeah, do not hesitate to ask if you have any doubts here. Is that clear? Still, we have not asked you to extract features on your own. That we will do perhaps in the next assignment. This assignment we are feeding you with already the features extracted. And all you need to do now is based on these features, you get these parameters. Again, mean and variance parameters, you know the uh, formulas, again, mathematical expressions for it. So don't worry about the ML estimation or is it uh, map estimation from whatever you already know, from that you do the mean and variance. Those, those are good enough for you. Okay, those particularly for Gaussian distribution, those are good enough. You just do that and uh, proceed with that. Any questions? Sarut, can you go to first question, sir? Okay. Yeah, right. just want Let's to read that. Yeah. Actually, we don't have this lab sheets in our hand, so uh, okay. we have to okay. see here. Okay, sir. okay, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. We will upload it uh, by today evening just to, we would like, we wanted to see if some uh, more clarifications or write up needs to be a little bit changed to make it um, easily understandable. So we just waited, we'll do that. Okay. Yeah, first one, as I said, is a simple plotting. Yeah. There is nothing much, uh, hardly five, six lines of code should be good enough. Second one. So, so, so in yeah. first year, output, output should be a plot or a matrix? It's a plot. What you get is a plot. Okay. It's a, as I was showing you here, it will be a plot, something like this, where you have three, you use, for example, one, one you use cross with one color, other you use, let's say, this plus with uh, one color and the other. You simply use some dots with a different color and use X1, X2 and plot it and then draw some inferences from that. That's all. Okay. So, so basically the main vectors M1, uh, mm. suppose ML is given as 1, 1 transpose. So uh, one, uh, one element corresponds to X1 and another corresponds to X2, right? Is it, sir? That's all. Okay. 
any any other questions comments uh, sir in the b part of question 1 hmm right. uh, so, uh, we simply multiply these with re respective classes these prior uh, pr pr no see what does that a priori probabilities what is that going to tell you uh, the proportion of which uh, how, uh, elements in in the test uh, Right. How many okay. samples you have to generate here? Okay. Twenty-four. Oh, okay, fine. Earlier, Allowed. it was if you see here, they are equiprobable classes. Okay. Now no, they are not equiprobable, but now this is the probability of occurrence of each class. Okay. No, no, got it. Good. Yeah. Now, any other questions? Do not hesitate to ask. Uh, so, can you go to the last question, D part? Yeah. Yeah. B part, uh, yeah. Uh, so we have to plot these decision for every pair of the feature. Mm -hmm. So you will get essentially six pairs. Just figure it out. Okay. So you you just plot. See, you write the same function, but now when you read it to that function, give these two uh, different parameters and just let your program run and plot. That's all. Okay. Write it in a function mode so that uh, your code will not just copy pasted multiple six times. Mm -hmm. Rather, you write it as a function, um, pass those arguments to that function and do it. Okay, sir. And what is this? Uh, tab? So, we are in the Excel sheet, we are given one test data. Yeah, so there are two Excel sheets. One is a training data. So, okay. this, this from the training data, you extract all the parameters required and you will compute all the probabilities required. Okay. And you perform the classification on the testing data. Okay. So based on that, now you would assign, for example, minimum uh, assume that uh, uh, Mahana, Mahalanobis distance is the right one to use. You use Mahalanobis distance. And uh, then you perform the assignment. And then whatever assignment you are getting there, you compare with actually to what it belongs. Okay, uh, so for each test data, we plot uh, for all the features, meaning uh, there are 15 data points here. Mm. So there will be six plots with each uh, having 15 points. Correct, correct. That's right. That's right. So each, so each one will give you something like this. And on top of it, you will keep these points there. Okay. And six plots again will come. And for all these six, you would in the E part, you would compute the classification error. You put a table here. Okay, sir. So hope, uh, how to calculate classification error is clear? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I think uh, for the last question, hmm. for all the six combination, they will do this, right? Classification correct. error. By for that, they will come to know uh, which features, which features are best. better, right? Correct, correct. That's right. That's which right. combination of uh, two features, features they will come to know by the time they come here, correct? Here you have a table here, uh, pair one, pair two, pairs up to pair six. What are those classification errors you are getting? Okay, based on that, you will realize which is more accurate. And you would suggest that if at all you have to use only two features, go for so and so. Uh, and so in the D part of the last question, hmm. uh, so first of all, we are, uh, obtain this color plot. And then uh, after that, when we want to plot the test data, it's simply a plotting problem, right? See, color plot is just for our convenience to understand the boundaries and hyperplanes, okay, all sir. these things. Oh, uh, for your interpretation, you don't really need the color plot. But color plot is very nice that immediately you you uh, you could kind of make an assessment about perhaps how the variances are there, how complicated is this uh, uh, selection criteria here many things you would uh, you can make some assessments inferences there hmm. but for doing it as we said you could compute for example the max maximizing the post ma map probabilities we have we were right as we were writing here you just need to compute probability of omega one into probability of x bar given omega one okay you compute all these three for a given x bar okay whichever is maximum you will assign it to that particular class Okay. Assume that out of them, this for a given x bar, omega two is uh, uh, is uh, this this is higher. Okay, then you will say that you assign it to class two. But what you may realize is well that is not actually class two, but ground truth in fact might be class one. 
Hmm. So that's an error. Okay, sir. It is not uh, but error. Sir, uh, what I was asking is... that in the deep part, when we are plotting the test data as well. Right. When you so are. Uh, would we plot the two points like uh, that? Um, let's say the true value ground truth is it belongs to class one. Then we will right. plot it somewhere in the class one, or we we plot it according to the classifier we got. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you just, so what you need to plot here is there are six plots here. Hmm. Okay. In each plot, there are 15 points there. Wherever those points have come, uh, for example, you just uh, uh, plot them each one in a different one. For example, you might have got few there. You might have got few here. Maybe some star kind of thing. You got the points here. These are outputs of your algorithm you plot there. Okay. So it. if the algorithm plot uh, says that the class belongs, uh, the data belongs to class one, Hmm. Even though it is belongs to class two, I will I will plot it in somewhere in class one. See the output of your algorithm is what you are going to plot here. Okay, sir. Not the ground. Okay, sir. Uh, but sir, uh, if you are plotting according to the uh, classifier output or the uh, algorithm output, right. but the data points, the feature vector will still remain the same, right? Correct. Feature vectors will remain same. See, it only tells you that those feature vectors are not good enough to capture in its entirety the di distinction between these classes. Okay. That is what will be the, uh, is the message there. See, it okay. is like uh, uh, saying whether how good is student is, okay? Or it is like uh, maybe which grade you will get at the end of this, uh, at the end of this uh, semester, in, in the current semester, suppose if I want to do, I might look at my features could be your mid semester examination marks, your attendance in the uh, in the classes, your last semester marks, okay, and maybe your gate score. These are the four things I have taken. Hmm. Now assume that I have taken gate score and mid semester marks, and I do what grade you will get. Hmm. I might be wrong because these two might not be good enough to capture this, or yes, it sir. can even so happen that despite using four. I may fail to do this. Hmm. All we are trying to do now is if I have to pick two out of this four, if I'm picking it, which is giving something which is pretty close. So it is like what you see in the test data set here is your final outcome. So this is telling you what grade you got. That is not shown to me. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so well, I, I use the first two features, one feature being your gate score, and then second feature midsem or midsem and your attendance. This way, if I'm using only two, what I'm getting here is what all I'm seeing. Okay, sir. So uh, sir, uh, that I actually got it. Uh, what I mm -hmm. wanted to ask was, uh, suppose let's say there are two points A and B mm -hmm. and uh, A belongs to class one and B belongs to class one as well. Okay. Okay, sir. But ac according to the algorithm, we see that the B point uh, comes out to be uh, same as the ground truth that it belongs to class one. Okay. But A point belongs to class two according to the algorithm. Right, right. Yes, sir. And uh, let's say I'm uh, using star for class one. Hmm. And uh, hashtag, hashtag for uh, class two. Okay. Okay, sir. So when I plot it in this uh, graph, hmm. And so uh, the point will come in the class one region according to this plot, because if the ground truth say according to the feature vector, it should belong to class one, but I will use a hashtag uh, symbol for class, uh, class two there. Perhaps what you are thinking is, instead of plotting the output, if I plot the ground truth, that is more informative. Huh? Uh, no, sir. Uh, what I'm saying that according to the feature vector, it should belong to the, uh, it will be plotted in the red region. Correct. But the symbol that will be used to plot it, that will belong to the class two. Is that what you are uh, trying uh, uh, no. asking to plot here? No, actually your question is making me think, is there a better way than what I said earlier? Uh, see, for now, let us keep things simple. Don't worry about your what is the output, what is the ground truth for your testing data till part E. Uh, sir, hmm. yes, sir. Sir, I think uh, they can just... Uh, uh, give I mean they can just plot the predicted results from the algorithm correct, like what we asked correct, and correct. they can ask whether it, I mean uh, they can just uh, compute whether it is right or wrong in their final question only that's it that's it that's what I'm saying right yes. correct 
Yeah. So you don't worry about the ground truth till here. That means you don't worry about this column till you come to part A. Okay. Hmm? That means if your algorithm says that it belongs to class one, despite actually it is belonging to class two, you just put whatever your algorithm gives, you just mark it accordingly here. Uh, yes, so that was what I was uh, asking. That uh, I was not uh, um, questioning about whether I should plot the ground truth or the uh, algorithm output. I was asking how to display the output. Like if it belongs to class one, but whether yeah. algorithm marks it yeah. as class two. Yeah. yeah, you do something like this. See, for example, if it is class one, you are using this. Yes, sir. Class two, you are using this. Okay. Class three. Oh, you are using a star. Okay, different colors also. Okay. But no need to use different color because there are already three colors there. So ah, if yes, you sir. get that point to be class one, okay, you put that here. Obviously, that will uh, all class one points will come here only. Yes, sir. Uh, but I was thinking like if a feature vector uh, it belongs to class one. If a feature vector belongs to class one. Hmm. Okay, sir. so it will be plotted somewhere in the red region here. See, uh, are you talking about the output of your algorithm or the, uh, the, uh, the output? Uh, sir, uh, what I'm asking that, suppose we have a feature vector which uh, makes the data belong to class one. Right. Me meaning we have a data which belongs to class no, you are getting confused. It. See, you are confusing that you are, you are assuming that you are already looking into this data while you are in part D. You don't know this. Okay, okay, this we will see only in part E. Obviously, then uh, the feature vector belonging and class are no different things. Hmm. I was just, uh, I'm still confused. I, so I think I will uh, pose a problem in a different way, I guess, because yeah. I, even I am confused right now. Yeah, right. See, your confusion is, your, is if I understand correctly, uh, whether this class has to be displayed or whatever class you got as an output, that's what your question eventually boils down to. So this this information you use only in the final stage, as simple as that. Okay. Hmm? Yeah. So I just plot it as uh, as it is. Like uh, if the classifier gives me class one, I will use the uh, cross sign or whatever it is, irrespective okay. of what the ground truth is. Correct, correct. Don't worry about the ground truth. That you worry about the ground truth here to see whether this kind. See, these are the boundaries you got for each class, assuming that those particular two vectors are able to distinguish the classes, which might not be the case. Actual boundaries of these classes might be something like this, this one, this might have come like this and it have been different. Okay, then this won't come here. Okay, some, it could be of very different size, but if you take these two feature vectors, it appears that these are the classes. This you got this uh, based on your training data. Testing data you have not uh, included here while coming arriving at these boundaries. And we don't have to use a color map here as well. That... Uh, color map you use for classes, that not, not for these points. Points? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hmm. That when we are trying to mark the region, uh, do we have to use colors? Yeah, please use that. I, th that way I will know the boundaries. Otherwise, see, I won't be able to see. Just because it is in color, you are able to see this and this. Otherwise, you won't see that, right? Okay. Oh, that you that that's why I'm saying you could use something like plot 3D command. You can mm -hmm. use it, and after that, uh, you you look at uh, say in your array you have like for example uh, one value is there for class W one W two W three result you compare. If W one is more, you use red color to plot. Otherwise, second you use blue, third you use green, something like that. Okay, and then you put hold on there. And then this point, wherever has come, you just put those points there. Okay, sir. In fact, even if you do not use this uh, cross, plus, and star differently, from the very color, we will figure out to which class it belongs to. That also doesn't matter here, uh, particularly when uh, you are using either Mahalanobis distance or, uh, yeah, if they are, say, yeah, if you are using that. Uh, Probability likelihood multiplied with uh, uh, the, yeah mul likelihood multiplied with prior probabilities and doing classification. Obviously, whichever is there in this region will be assigned to class one. There is no doubt about that. Hmm. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, just one last question. That once we have got this uh, color map, uh, right, sir. And right. now we want to plot the test points. Right. 
Okay, so suppose a class two object, mm. uh, not according to the algorithm class. Mm. See, let me first write uh, this thing. Probably this color is, for example, class one. Mm. This is anything falling in this is class two. Anything falling here is okay. class three. Now you tell me. Okay. Uh, suppose I have a feature vector at four point five comma three. At four point five comma three. Okay. Right. Okay. And this belongs to class two actually, according no. to the algorithm. Are you talking? How do you know it belongs to class three from uh, this? Because right? the algorithm plotted it as class two, classified it as class two. It can never do that. Okay? This is already that's how you are doing. Uh, the, uh, see, once you are getting these boundaries. Uh, it cannot do put it in a different class. That is okay. where all the confusion is coming. That will never happen. Okay, fine. Now get it. Hmm. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Uh, what it could happen is these boundaries are not correct. That could happen because those two feature vectors cannot capture in completeness the boundaries there. Okay, so if a feature, uh, if a data point existed in the specified uh, the one, the boundary will uh, change according to that. Correct, correct. That you will realize also when you are doing that calculation. Yeah, I, I was actually getting confused by the boundary and the right, boundary. right. Now I understand. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? Is that clear now? Yes, sir. Good, good. That uh, uh, this uh, clar clarification you got. Yes. Any other question? Is that clear? Okay, good. So then I'll uh, we will upload this by today evening. And uh, please do, uh, I think one week should be good enough for this. Um, uh, it's like last one will probably take you a couple of hours. Uh, the second one, maybe half an hour. The first one, maybe five minutes. That's what I would perhaps take, maybe if I do that. Okay, so let's do it by Thursday and uh, then we can have something more concrete where you do ML estimation or some other estimation and you, you, you yourself extract some features and do something that's what we will let's see if that such assignment given can be given for the seventh programming assignment okay uh, any other questions or comments or thoughts uh, uh, so sir, can the sir, timeline be, be declared uh, you want uh, yeah can the timeline be uh, will the answer sheets be shown or when will the answer yeah the answer i meant to correct those answer sheets so next week I'll uh, for sure sometime during Monday I may have to take leave on Monday. So next class when is the next class? Most likely on Wednesday. Uh, I'll finish my corrections and then we'll share your marks. And uh, question wise I'll share your marks. And then if you have any, uh, if you would like to refer to your answer sheets for any specific questions, then I'll uh, I'll show you the same and we can discuss on that. Okay, sir. Yeah. Any other things? Uh, sir, uh, some of us are traveling this weekend. So could the timeline be put till Saturday, sir, if that's not a problem? Okay, okay. okay that's fine. So you mean uh, uh, something like 26th? 26th. Yes, sir. 26th. Yes. Right. Okay, okay. I'll put one more day also. 27th. I'll keep. Don't worry. Thank you. So by 27th, you do that. Good. Any other, any other points? Okay, then. Sir, once can you show the third question, sir? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, sir. So can you, uh, can you go to the next sheet? Can, which one? Yeah, that blue one. Yeah. Yes, I want to capture the screenshots. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll don't worry. We will upload it uh, very soon. Okay. Ah, uh, just maybe in a few hours we will upload. It. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Hmm? Uh, if any small minor tweaks are required, we'll do that and upload it there. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay then. Bye. Take care. See you next week. Bye.